In this video, I'm going to provide a brief update on changes I've made to the address space and address decoding on my 286 system. In my last video, I showed this for my current address space and how I have things set up. And I mentioned as I was talking about a video card that I somewhere need to fit in some addresses for my video, video addressing or video RAM that I'm going to be using. And that is 128K that I want to make room for. And so I suggested in that video that maybe I would do this. I would increase my RAM to 640. I would shrink my ROM to 256. And then the space in between is a nice 128K. And so that'll give me basically the spacing that I'm looking for for RAM, ROM, and video. And off to the left, you can see that means now that my ROM is going to start out at C1000. So up here, this C1000. And down in this table, you can see the same thing. I showed this table last time. I did have a typo in the last video. This was meant to be an 8, and I had a 0. But basically, RAM is going to go from... 0 to 9 FFFF. ROM will go from C up to FFFFF. So that gives me my address space that I'm going to be using. And really, addresses A19, 18, and 17 will help me decode that. So if A19 is a 0, I know that I'm in RAM. If A19 is a 1 and A17 and 18 are zeros, I know I'm still in RAM. If the first two, 19 and 18, are ones, I know I'm in my ROM space. Uh, and right now I don't have to worry about the video decoding. That will happen on the video card at a later time. So this is what I've actually implemented now in my system. And let me just show you the half dozen steps I had to go through to make that happen. Uh, so this is the list, and you can kind of scan through that. But I'm just going to walk through these one by one real quick. So the first thing is that I updated the decode logic in my PSOC. So this is what the full decode logic looks like at this point. There really isn't that much there. This is really simple, but again, this saves me from having to rewire and pull chips and things like that. It lets me kind of rethink my decode uh, very easily. Uh, for inputs, I did bring in two additional signals. I brought in A18 and A17 now. And when it comes to my ROM read, so this ROM output enable uh, active low, I added that I'm going to also have to check for a 18 now. So 19 needs to be a 1, 18 needs to be a 1. So that is my ROM, and I'm checking these two things right here to enable my ROM output. Then I get to my RAM read and RAM write. And so if I come to my RAM, I first of all have to make sure that I have one of these conditions is true, either A19 is 0 or I have a 100 like you see here. So I check for A19 and I alternately check for A19 uh, instead of being a 0 up here, being a 1 and then 18 and 17 being zeros. And if either of those are true coming in the, into this exclusive OR, I'll then get a 1 coming out of this. They can't both be true because 19 can't be a 1 and a 0 simultaneously. And if they're both false, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for if either one of these conditions is true, then a 1 will come out of here and would go into my NAND gate over here. And then if it's a read, I'm checking that this MRDC is low, and that would give me a 1 if it was the case because I invert it. Uh, or check that MWTC is low, uh, depending on if I'm checking for reads or writes. And then if those are true, it, it, it is what I'm looking for, then I can have my RAM output enable or my RAM write enable active low signals. So that's what my, my decode logic currently looks like inside of my PSOC. I then had to turn around, of course, and program the PSOC. So I updated the PSOC here. I had to bring in those new address lines, and those were address lines 18 and 17 that I didn't have before. So those are now coming in right up here. I then had to go down to my RAM. And in my RAM, which is buried under this mess of wires, I do have a jumpered cable or uh, wire that runs up to this chip here, which is my bus controller. 
and it was previously looking at this MWTC. I was kind of cheating, knowing that that was the only writable address space other than I.O., which is a separate, a totally separate address space. Because this was my only writable, I was just using MWTC uh, as my write signal. Well, now that I'm adding in video RAM, I can't assume this is my only writable address. Uh, obviously ROM I'm not going to write to, but now I'm going to be able to write to RAM or video RAM. So I, I removed that connection and then went back up to my PSOC. And this connection was going up to here. I disconnected it and pulled it over here. So it's just sitting in an empty uh, column of pins here on the on the breadboard. And then I just ran a jumper that goes from the right pin, the proper pin on the PSOC over to that same column. So that got me my right enable for my RAM down to the right enable pins on the RAM down here. So check that off. And that uh, is it for those couple of steps. Then I had to update my assembly code. At the end of my assembly code, I used to have it fill in all the way up to 80000. Well, now I have 256K total, not 512, so I'm stopping at 40000. And when I turn on the system and it goes to FFFF0, this is where it's going to go to, is right here which is in the ROM, or at least as this far as this is concerned, it thinks it's 3FFF0, but once I put it into my address space, it, it's actually FFFF0. First thing it does is it's gonna to jump to physical address C0000. This is my segment, this is the offset. Remember this essentially shifts left one or one character, which is uh, multiplied by 16, so it's a C000 zero plus whatever is my offset so that is zero um, so it'll, this is now my jump address the other thing i then had to do is go down to the the configuration of my interrupt service routine so in the interrupt vector table which is at the beginning of my ram i have to store a pointer to where my keyboard interrupt service routine is at and this used to be at eight zero 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 for the segment I change that to be C000 for the segment, which is the beginning of my ROM. And then the final thing I did is my call to update that list file that NASM generates. Previously, I was writing an extra 80,000 to the line number. And now I'm going to write C000 added to whatever the line numbers are. Uh, and again, what that does is as I look at that listing file, the very beginning of the ROM, it's going to list as zero, and it's going to count up from there. But really, the physical address space is C0000 plus whatever NASM puts into that listing file. Um, and that helps me understand it just by looking at it and, and seeing the actual physical addresses. It also, for my debugger, uh, lets my debugger use that file to understand the real physical addresses and track within that file where I'm at based on what it's reading from the actual address bus of the system and which by the way as I got into these updates uh, the debugger came in really handy because initially I didn't have my ROM uh, pins quite right I'll talk about that here in a second and so I was reading back all F's so I knew something was wrong there uh, and uh, I had another issue that uh, the debugger caught was my RAM wasn't working properly uh, so I could tell I was jumping to, uh, I was calling a routine, but I wasn't ever coming back. And I, that pretty quickly told me it's probably something to do with the stack. My, my RAM isn't working. Uh, so the debugger came in really handy just in this quick change I made. I was able to identify some issues uh, within minutes, uh, which was great. Uh, maybe one last comment of something I, I wanted to do here is swap out my flash ROMs. So my flash ROMs are sitting right here and at the beginning of this video series I started out with a pair of they're these SST and their SF 040s and those were 256 no sorry those were 512 K flash ROMs so a pair of those was a full mag so I was wasting half of it so I later changed those out for the 20s which are uh, 256 K each which gave me 512 which was perfect for, for what I've been doing 
But now that I'm cutting my ROM space in half again, I'm going to use the 10, the SF010s. Those are 128K each. So if I have a pair of those, that gives me my 256K of ROM that I'm going to be using. Well, a while ago I knew that was coming and I ordered a batch of 10s, or I thought I ordered a batch of 10s. I accidentally ordered 40s. So I now have a whole stockpile of 40s, uh, way more than I need, and I don't have any 10s. So what I did is I used 40s, and I took the top two pins and pulled them through a resistor to ground. So I just am grounding the top two address signals, and I'm treating these 40s as 10s. And even when I went to program them in my Flash programmer, my EEPROM programmer, I told it I was using the 10s, and I told it not to check the chip ID, and I wrote it out as if they were 10s. So I'm writing them as 10s, I'm treating them as 10s, even though they're 40s. And once I get the real chips, uh, the proper 10s uh, in hand, which will probably be at least a few weeks down the road, I'll swap these out real quick and then probably take off these stickers. And that's just my reminder that I need to treat these as 10s, even though my programmer knows they're not 10s, it knows that they're 40s. So that is the quick update. I'm going to stop there. Uh, I went through those steps. Everything is working. Uh, I got my post beep working just fine. I, I was able to hit the escape key and have it check out my math coprocessor. I got back the results I'm looking for. And uh, at the moment, I am running a 6 megahertz clock, processor clock, and that's all good. So I've got a 24 up here. I cut it in half when it leaves my card here. So I've got 12 coming into the board, and then the processor I will use half of that internally. So it's using a 6. So 6 megahertz, this is all running great. That's probably it for now. Questions, comments, post them uh, down below. Appreciate it. Thanks.